stop, look around you. The person sitting next to you could be one of the millions of foster care children in the world or one of thousands in Oregon alone like me. In the United States, there are over 400,000 foster care children and I am one of them. In 2016, there were 676,000 kids that entered the foster care system due to maltreatment. These children ended up getting hurt by their parents. They were not fed. They had so many different forms of abuse that led to this. I experienced several different forms of abuse before entering the foster care system. When I was 16 years old, I entered the system with my baby sister, who was only seven at the time. It was one of the most painful things that ever happened to me. I had taken care of her my entire life. I had protected her from the people that abused me, and we called them parents. My entire life was dedicated to my sister and protecting her. So when my mother took her from me, it was the most terrifying thing that had ever happened to me. That's when I made the call to DHS. My hands were shaking and tears streamed down from my face as I had no idea what would happen next. Following that, me and my sister found ourselves entering foster care. The reason why we entered foster care wasn't because of how many beatings I got from my father or how many times my mother called me names. It was because my father decided to leave one morning when a judge specifically told him not to leave us alone with my mom. When we left the apartment, I heard my mother scream and fall to the ground crying. She had no idea what was going on because she was too mentally ill at the time to understand. As we got in the car, I looked out of the window and saw the apartment I once knew, once called home. I looked down at my baby sister and she was terrified. I didn't know what to do at the time, so I just got in theater and told her that we were gonna be safe. But the truth was, I didn't know if we were gonna be safe. You hear so many different news reports and stories about children being abused in the system that when you're put into the system yourself, it's like being terrified. And for me at the time, basically being a mother to a seven-year-old when I was only 16, I didn't know how I was gonna protect her anymore. There was one person that I was able to latch on to while with my sister, and that was my first caseworker. She was kind, sympathetic, attentive, and cared about our well-being. I loved our first caseworker. She was so nice to me and understand the fact that I was basically my sister's mom. She did her hardest to find us a place for the night, and she found us a really amazing family. But the sad thing was, we didn't get to keep her. And the sad thing is, is that not all children have an amazing first caseworker like that. My friend Jaden, who was in the foster care system from the time she was a baby, had a horrible caseworker. Every time this caseworker would enter the home she had placed her in, she would ignore all the signs of abuse that she was struggling with, and she would just leave. Not all caseworkers are like this, though. Many want to help youth navigate to a better future. But just like everything else in the world, there are always bad apples in the bunch, and you can't help but that. It's issues like this that happen to millions of kids around the world in government care. As an example that happened to me, I was homeless twice while being in foster care. I was a very lucky kid, though. I had an amazing friend with a very gracious family that allowed me to ent enter their home and stay there for about three months. DHS didn't know where to place me, and that's not because I was a terrible teen or because I was horrible to my foster parents. It was because sometimes foster parents don't want to be foster parents anymore. And sometimes DHS puts kids inside of temporary placements. They don't find enough another placement in the right time because there aren't that many placements. And the kid has nowhere to go because the foster parents that they were with were only temporary ones. That is a major issue. And that's what has caused me to become homeless twice while being in the system. And the second time I became homeless, I was able to go back to my friend and her family. Kids are not as lucky as I was. Now, not only did I have this amazing friend with her gracious family, but I also had an amazing Spitfire Casa named Kathy. 
CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocate. And my CASA has helped me out through a lot. She has always been there through court dates and the times that I needed her the most. But the main issue with CASAs, there aren't enough of them in the state of Oregon. There are 11,000 children in the state of Oregon on a day-to-day -day basis. And there are only 30% of CASAs to the amount of children in the state. That means not every child has a CASA like Kathy advocating for them and being there for them in their time of need. If we were to help the CASA Foundation by giving them more support, more funding, more help, it would prevent children from having horrible incidences, not being able to go to their court tickets because they're terrified of seeing their parents like I was, or just giving up completely. I have known what it's like to live without these programs. The first six months I was in foster care, I didn't have these programs. And it was the most terrifying time in my life. In 2018, I tried to commit suicide while being in foster care. It wasn't the first attempt on my life, but it was my darkest. But I'm not the only foster child that tries to commit suicide. It's a major issue in the foster care community. A foster child is four times more likely to commit suicide than the average kid. This means that not every child has a person advocating for them like Kathy does for me. Without Kathy, my voice and my needs would not be heard. If every child in the United States were to have a CASA, the issues of the high numbers of homelessness, drug issues, and incarceration would be dropped significantly. The CASA program needs more volunteers and more help to help sustain it and bring it to its full potential. Other programs that have helped me while being inside the foster care system have been the ILP program and the peer mentorship program. ILP stands for Independent Living Program. It helps children 16 years and older to navigate slash prepare for the adult life. It has helped me get money to live on my own while being inside DHS custody. This program helps prevent homelessness and early pregnancy issues within Oregon. According to the National Foster Youth Institute website, after reaching the age of 18, 20% of foster youth become instantly homeless, 7 out of 10 girls become pregnant before the age of 21, and 60% of young men become convicted of a crime. If we were to help support the IOP program, it would drop these numbers significantly. Another program that helps drop these numbers is the peer mentorship program. The peer mentorship program not only provides help to parents that are wanting to help take care of their children again, it provides them with parenting classes and support that they need to take their children back into their homes and into their care, but it also helps foster children who are still in the system have a friend. My peer mentor is Ava. She's amazing. She's been there for me from times where I was moving homes to having to vent about my math professor in early college. That was a bad time. <laughs> she has helped me through everything that a mom is supposed to help me out with, and a friend. If I didn't have her, I would be in a very bad place right now. I've talked to other youth that have peer mentors. Thankfully, they're a little bit more accessible than CASAs, and they say that they have benefited from this so much more. This program has helped so many youth, and just like the other two, it helps prevent homelessness, incarceration, and early pregnancy. These programs need your help. If you wanted to help these programs, there are many different ways you can do it. If you wanted to help the CASA program, you could become a CASA volunteer, or you could volunteer during their annual toy drive around Christmas. If you wanted to help out the ILP organization, you could give your time by volunteering, or you could donate things, and it doesn't have to be money. It could be toys, it could be old clothes. Same thing goes for the peer mentorship program. Volunteering, always wanted. And if you wanted to help out with donations, money is always, of course, wanted when it comes to this program, but it's not always mandatory. Anything you can do to give back helps. If you want to learn about more programs inside of your area, you can go to your local DHS website or you can call your local DHS during normal business hours. 
If you really want to learn more about how it is being a foster parent or a foster child, you can go to instantfamily.org or you can even watch the movie Instant Family. I watched it and being a youth myself, I've experienced almost every single scenario that they have demonstrated inside the movie. It's about this adopting family that takes care of these three kids that they are placed with. It shows their ups and their downs and everything in between and it shows how they eventually become an instant family. These programs and these children need each and every one of you. It can't just be me standing here talking about what happened to me. It has to be people like you that are hoping to support us. I'm soon going to be out of this system. I soon will not have the TED Talk stage to help support these programs. It's not just going to be me that are helping these kids. It has to be others. It has to be future generations. We have to make sure that there are things for these children. Please, if you can do anything you can to give back, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.